This is a simple addition problem using Napier's location numerals from 1617. It was a totally new and revolutionary way of writing numbers which was immediately forgotten by history. It's not a typical positional base 10 number system. It's closer to base 2, but there's no zero, and despite the name, the locations of the symbols don't affect their value. It's kind of like binary, but better. I mean, worse. Previously on whatever these videos are called. Rhabdologia. See, what we have here is a binary counting board. The Arithmetique Localis. These guys like buttons, right? While he was developing that chessboard style counting board, Napier actually invented a whole new way to write numbers. It's not a place value based number system, so you need to learn all new tricks if you want to add or subtract with them. Here's the idea. A is 1, B is 2, C is 4, D is 8. Each one represents a power of 2. You can see it on the board there. Those are the values for each symbol. After you run out of letters, Napier uses the ampersand for some reason, and then the Greek letters. And beyond this giant number, I guess you're out of luck. Hey, here's a fun fact. Anybody notice the board doesn't have a J on it? That's because the letter J hadn't entered the English language yet. Look it up. Anyway, when you see letters next to each other, that represents their sum. So A, C, D would be 1 plus 4 plus 8, which is 13. And if I wanted to write 91, well, you've got to break it up into powers of 2, like this. So 91 would be A, B, D, E, G. Since the value of each letter is baked into the letter itself, the ordering of the symbols doesn't matter. Usually I'm going to write them in alphabetical order, but that's just a convention. So actually all of these would represent the same number. Badge. So numbers can be written in different ways by rearranging the order, but you could also get different representations by repeating letters. Like B is 2, but you could also do AA, and that also represents 2. Or the number 4 could be written in any of these six different ways. Because of this non-uniqueness, Napier defines two different operations that you can do with one of these numbers. Abbreviation and extension. Abbreviation is like simplifying the number, like two A's make a B. Sometimes you gotta do more than one step, like if you have a double carry, no problem. This is kind of like simplifying a fraction, like you don't usually need to do it unless somebody tells you to, but it does make things easier to read at the end. And the second operation is extension. This is weird. It's like the opposite of abbreviation. The number is fully extended when there are no missing letters, like A, C, D is not extended because the B is missing. To make it extended, I change the C to two Bs, but now I'm missing a C, so I change the D to two Cs. It's weird, I know, but just go with it. And now we can talk about adding and subtracting with the location numerals. Adding is easy. You just mash the two numbers together, and then you rearrange and abbreviate if you want to, like for this one here. Now that is the answer, although it's not written in a very nice form. Probably we should abbreviate. It's pretty easy if you know what you're doing. Of course, this relies on me already having the alphabetical order memorized, like I know two M's is an N, because N comes after M. For me, this would be much harder if I got into the Greek symbols, like two lambdas is a mu, but I don't have the Greek alphabetical order memorized, so I'm going to have to look that one up every time. Anyway, to subtract, check it out. If I want to do like X minus Y, first you write X in extended form and Y in abbreviated form, and then you subtract by canceling letters, like this one. First, I do some steps to extend the first number. And then the subtraction just looks like canceling letter by letter. You really need to extend the first number so that there won't be any missing letters that you would want to cross off at the end. And that's how you add and subtract with these things. Can you also multiply and divide? Well, yeah, that's what the board is for. Watch that other video if you want the details. Obviously, Napier's location numerals didn't take the world by storm. Today, basically, nobody's ever heard of them, even among mathematicians. Probably because they're a more primitive version of a modern system that's basically better in every way. Binary numbers. Like the number 867 in location numbers looks like this. A, B, F, G, I, K. It looks like this on the board. And when you see it on the board, this immediately tells me the binary form of my number is this. 
It's just writing ones in the digits where the markers go and zeros in the empty spots. So the abbreviated location numerals are really just the same as modern binary. And when you compare the two systems, Napier really comes up short. I got three reasons why Napier's location numerals are worse than binary. Reason number one, addition and subtraction. Adding and subtracting location numerals requires sometimes several steps of abbreviation and extension. This is annoying, but for adding and subtracting with binary numbers, you can just use the ordinary addition algorithm. You just got to remember to carry twos instead of tens. Like this addition that I just did with the location numbers, here's how you do it in binary. It's easy. Reason number two, unique representations. Whole numbers in binary have unique representations, just like base 10 numbers. This is something that we take for granted, but it's kind of fundamental. Like, can you tell if these two things represent the same number? They do not. What about these two things? I don't know. In binary, the number 17 looks like this, and that's it. In location numerals, there are over 9,000 ways to write the number 17. Come on, Merch! Reason number three. Too many symbols, not enough numbers. Each symbol has a specific value, like D is always 8, E is always 16. To make really big numbers, you just need to keep inventing new symbols. Napier's big board only goes up to this big number. And sure, I guess if you needed to go bigger, you could just invent more symbols. But we've already got 45 symbols on here. Somebody using this system has to remember the values of 45 different symbols, or at least what order they're in. And that only gets you up to this number. This is part of the beauty of positional systems like our base 10 Arabic numbers or even binary. Just with these two symbols, you can write a number as big as you want. What we have here really is a great idea being weighed down by some bad ideas. Napier's basic idea is actually brilliant, to build a number system based on powers of two. This is an amazing insight with essentially no historical precedent that was available to Napier. And we now know that the basic idea of binary computation would eventually change everything. But the rest of Napier's system is just clunky. Making each symbol have a specific value is kind of like he said, what if I do Roman numerals but binary, when really he should have said, what if I do Arabic numerals but binary? And this is exactly what mathematical superstar Gottfried Leibniz did about a hundred years later when he invented what we now call binary. So maybe we could view the location numerals as some sort of awkward transitional technology which eventually led to the positional binary system. But that's hard to say. I'm not an expert, but I'm not aware that Leibniz used Napier's ideas as a starting point. Napier's work on logarithms was brilliant and immediately recognized as such. The Napier's bones was less revolutionary, but still solid. And the location numerals, I mean, this is amazing. But I get the sense that Napier didn't even know how amazing it is. Get this out of here. Really, it's a familiar pattern that you see a lot from creative people, especially in later career works. The vision, the spark still comes through from time to time. But get this out of here. That's no offense to Napier. You know, I'm a bit of a mathematician myself, and I do my best proving new theorems, but I'll never be a superstar by any means. I'm sure later generations will look at my work as kind of clumsy and peripheral, maybe a few baby steps in the right direction. But if you told me 500 years from now that I had one truly great idea, even if I didn't know it was great, and even if I covered it up with a bunch of nonsense, hey, I'll take it. Music